Climate change is the existential threat to our generation, to all of us. And to kids like us, this is a deeply upsetting thought, that changing weather patterns and ocean temperatures will increasingly define our futures. Often people think, I'm just one person. What I do isn't going to matter, let alone change anything. And this is especially true when it comes to climate change, where many of the simple solutions, like biking or cycling or milk cartons, might feel somewhat insignificant in its statistical impact on the matter. And we're just two kids. We can't vote. We're not policymakers. What can we possibly do about this threat to the very existence of our species? Well, there is something we can do. Short answer, stop throwing your banana peel into the trash can. Instead, throw it in the compost bin. My brother and I see firsthand every day in the school cafeteria how food is wasted. Food that goes straight into the landfill, which ends up looking like this dump site. There are about 2,635 of these landfill sites in our country. And as food decomposes in the landfill, it's decomposing anaerobically, which means it's not aerated. And because of that process, it releases methane, which then goes out into the atmosphere and traps heat like CO2 does. When composting is done properly, it should not release this methane. While one in six Americans don't know where their next meal is coming from, for many of us, food is so easily accessible that it becomes the norm to throw out that old apple, a mullein bag of carrots, or stale bread. It's just so easy to get rid of food we don't want to eat in a moment, and also easy to buy new food from the supermarket, or in our case, the school cafeteria. One day, my brother and I read an article about a school not far from where we live that had implemented composting and successfully reduced their cafeteria's food waste. This got us thinking about what we could possibly do in our own cafeteria to reduce our food waste. We're currently working to get composting into place in our high school, while in Tangier Berlin High School. What we found is there are a lot of cultural and institutional challenges that need to be overcome. It's not just that people are busy and that adults have really full plates, but it's that people have found their own efforts for change thwarted, either because of cost, time, or systemic lethargy. In short, it seems easier and cheaper to keep things the way they are. But is it really cheaper? Because the benefits of composting aren't just about doing the right thing for the environment. It's also a good financial sense. By implementing composting, Hilliard City Schools reduced their trash and recycling pickup costs by $22,000. And these cost savings translate to households individually as well. A typical Central Ohio family wastes about $1,500 per year on food they don't eat. My sister has been alive for 16 years. So that amounts to about $24,000 in her lifetime which covers almost three years of your average in-state Ohio college tuition, or enough to buy a car. Or I could get AirPods, an iPad, Apple Pencil, a smart watch, and a new phone and computer, and still have $18,000 left over. Ironically, one of the biggest arguments against getting composting systems in place, in schools or local pickup, is the cost. Another is people thinking it's not going to make much of a difference. Now, food waste may seem like small fry when comparing it to oil drills and melting ice caps, but it actually contributes significantly to climate change. To put it into perspective, food waste creates two times as many greenhouse gas emissions as commercial aviation in the US. And as food waste is left in the landfill, it releases methane, which is 30 times more potent as a greenhouse gas than carbon dioxide because it traps more heat. Methane is also responsible for 20% of global warming since the Industrial Revolution. However, it has a shorter lifespan than carbon dioxide. So according to NASA, if we can reduce our methane emissions, we could significantly reduce the near-term effects of climate change. So what are we doing about this? We're currently working with our environmental club and the advisor, Ms. Sarah Nethero, to implement a composting program into our high school. We're also working with our STEM Academy program's principal, Karen Sidoti, to implement a small, scalable program in the Academy for Community Transition a track for students with special needs to prepare for life after they graduate from high school. The composting project can create jobs within the job skills training program for these classmates. Our hope is that by showing how this can be done and what it does positively for our school, our district, other schools, and wider will see the benefits of composting and implement it in their own schools, homes, and organizations. In doing our research for this project, my brother and I contacted the DKMM Solid Waste District, which is our local solid waste authority. And while they were supportive with the idea of implementing composting, they just didn't have the funds to help make it happen for our school, let alone our school district. Like all schools, our public high school has a budget, 
and many great things are accomplished with that budget, but so far, composting has not been a priority, mostly because of not knowing how it works or the benefits that can come from it, financially and otherwise. So we needed to figure out how to get this to happen. Rather than stopping because it's a lot of work, it seems like it might just be too hard or have too many obstacles. We contacted other schools, OSU, composting collectors, and a local farm that could help. We spoke with Jennifer Way Young from the Delaware General Health District, our school district superintendent, our school district food service supervisor, Bethany Lenko, our principal, Todd Spinner, our STEM Academy principal, Ms. Sedoti, and our environmental club. And with all these stakeholders, we've come up with a plan. We've been told that we need to start out with education. So by the end of this year, we'll have gotten composting bins into the cafeteria with a grant from the Columbus Zoo, and we'll be working to run a student awareness campaign of how to compost. Next step is collecting data. We have been asked by the composting company to collect data for one year to make the program successful. If we know how much food we have and what kinds, we can give this data to that company. We'll know how often they'll need to pick up and more details for the process. Then, once we have this information, we'll apply for a grant from the Ohio State Government to get the funding that we'd need for a composting machine that would liquefy food waste. Unfortunately, this machine costs $40,000, so it's not going to be easy. What we want you to notice is that this teacher, Ms. Nethero, who's holding this project together, is doing so on her own time with no benefit to her. And these students working on it together are doing so because they care, not because they get any sort of credit for it. We are doing this because we care about our futures and the futures of the generations after us. What you've been able to put into place now is essentially a four-year plan to get composting into place in our high school. If it works, it can be considered for the rest of the district. But here's the reality. Four years is simply not fast enough. To wait three years for the hope that maybe then we'll get the funding for the composting machine, that's just too long. It's like our species is all in one big Titanic. And in order to turn this boat, it's going to take all of us looking ahead and making small adjustments before we hit the iceberg. But it's also human nature to live in the present, especially when planning for the future is going to cost us cold, hard cash. So we're continuing to head straight into the iceberg because it's just kind of too hard to get the boat moving in a different direction, even when we know it's for our own good. But we also know this. Short-term costs to address climate change are effective in reducing our long-term costs. And a big question that's come up from my brother and me during this process is, as so many adults have been discussing the problem being cost, our question is, who defines that cost? And who pays? Our generation is going to bear the costs of the decisions made today, both the cost financially and the cost personally. According to the National Centers for Environmental Information, since 1980, the U.S. has sustained at least 323 weather and climate disasters where overall costs and damages reached or exceeded $1 billion per event. And these events are becoming increasingly common. Among these listed are wildfires in the West, flooding in California and Louisiana, severe weather across the Midwest and into the South, tropical storms and tornadoes in the South, and hail in Texas and Ohio. A billion dollars or more per event, and you have over $2 trillion spent for these 323 disasters. That's taxpayers' cold, hard cash. Over $2 trillion spent, and these events only increasing as our greenhouse gas emissions are not reduced. A $40,000 compost liquefier is sounding like a really good option. We know that methane is detrimental to our planet. We know that reducing food waste reduces methane emissions, and that it is doable. The Ohio State University at football games in their stadium have implemented composting cans next to every recycling and trash can, and staff help people stay mindful about what goes where. What will it take to get composting bins to be as common as trash cans? Short answer, it takes you, and you're more impactful than you might think. Horizon Elementary, part of Hilliard City Schools, found that students went home and got their families composting. In Upper Arlington, a town near us, the Trash Authority campaigned residents to implement composting and they reduced their food waste by 23%. What's more, compost is good for the earth itself. Farmers can use it, gardeners love it, and towns can use it for landscaping. And this effort isn't local either. According to the Pulitzer Center, in South Korea, putting food residue into landfills and waterways is nationally banned. Instead, there's a governmental program that ensures access to composting across the country. As a nation, we are behind where we need to be. 
An article by The Guardian notes that some US states and cities have taken action. For example, California has enacted legislation to reduce organic waste, and New York City has implemented a universal curbside composting program in Queens. However, there is no federal program, let alone state or even privately run programs that offer stable or easy access to composting. And as our greenhouse gas emissions are not reduced, lower income households end up being disproportionately affected. And you can do this too. Put a little compost bin in your home. We found after starting one in our household that we created a tiny bag of trash each week with mostly compost and recycling materials. We have a backyard, so we're able to put the compost in a composting bin outside. Some people make mounds or use cages. But if you don't have that kind of room, you'll go for a place that collects it, either a garbage company, a compost startup, a nearby gardening store, a neighbor who's a gardener, maybe a farm. Call your local school board and ask them to implement composting. With the millions of pounds of food waste created in schools, we could significantly and impactfully reduce methane emissions with composting programs. Call your town local officials, your garbage collectors, or your congressional representatives and ask for compost collection services. Or, one of the easiest ways to reduce your food waste is actually to buy only what you need from the store, even just going in with the grocery list. We are the impact. We make the change. If we don't do it, who will? Yeah, four years is not fast enough. Yeah, we need $40,000 and the goodwill to make this happen. And yeah, we're just two teenagers in the Midwest. But we're not giving up. Hope is all we have. Hope and the knowledge that small changes, together, do make big differences. Change is slow and often incremental. We need this change now, but we're not going to give up on our hope for a better future. And we're going to do everything we can to make that happen. We can do this. Will you join us? Thank you.